All right, in this video, we're gonna upgrade our PLC program to version 36. It's currently on version 35, uh, and you may ask, well, why or what is the reason you're doing that? So, in the instance of the Compact Logics uh, L340ER, uh, uh, you do not have the ability to use, uh, basically, to use uh, Factory Talk Echo. Uh, on the certain firmware packages, right? So basically, um, if I look at firmware packages, you can use Compact Logic. See, you're able to use Compact Logic if you upgrade. The only thing you're able to use for version 33, version 34, version 35, and 36 is the classic control logics. Um, if you're using Compact Logics or Compact Guard Logics or something like that, you need to have version 36 in order to use Factory Talk Links. So, um, or Factory Talk uh, Logics Echo, I'm sorry. So when it comes down to it, the goal here that I'm trying to do is to simulate and be able to emulate my program so that I can test it with my HMI. So the whole process here is, is to take the program exactly the way it is in the field and be able to test it and make sure that everything is working so that I, I don't have any bugs or any, anything I, I can work out before the actual, uh, you know, you go, you go down there or say for instance, the, 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 the vendor or the person you did the program for is saying, hey, you know, we're having these problems and you can actually simulate it yourself and see if that problem is, is true to form and fix it and send them the fix if you need to. So in this instance, we were going to upgrade our processor um, because I currently it's on version 35 and as I indicated on my firmware packages version 35 does not give me the ability unless I had guard logics now it does give me the ability on guard logics but not compact logics compact logics has to be version 36 in the factory talk logics echo okay so what we're going to do is we're going to keep our project the, the same processor type as if I'm going to change it to version 36 and then I'm going to let it naturally uh, upgrade its process. The uh, Studio 5000R Rockwall automation itself has gotten tremendously better with uh, migrating and upgrading their software. Um, I wouldn't necessarily jump to if if you know if it was me, I wouldn't jump from like version 16 to version 36. Uh, obviously you can't do something like that but if you're going from like version 35 to version 36 or even version 32 to version 36 it's a pretty easy transition and they will give you any kind of errors right here so you can do a, a little quick test to make sure you don't have any errors as long as there's no errors down here you're fine i do have a lot of warnings in my program because i do have a lot of afis or do have a lot of things like that inside of it and the program will give you warnings if you have AFIs. I choose to use AFIs when I'm not using something. So not really a big deal for me. Um, so basically I'm gonna hit the save button at that point. I'm gonna come over here. I'm going to close this out. I'm gonna get rid of my old file and then I'm going to add a new one. So with that said, I'm gonna add from ACD file and then I'm gonna to point to where that ACD file is. In this case, the ACD file is right here, the one I just upgraded to version 36. It's gonna come over here and it's gonna give me the name. Let's just, for the sake of uh, what we're doing, let's just call this wastewater. Um, we want our processor, basically we're using uh, the computer as the emulator. So that's going to be, we're not, we're not actually connecting to any field devices. We're using the computer to simulate and emulate this situation. So. Uh, basically, the processor will be completely emulated the way it is through the um, 127.0.0.1. And that's the computer's loopback. So that's what uh, Rockwell's using on that. So we'll add that and come over here. And now we have our processor, right? We can come over here and see the, the processor and, and turn it off and turn it on current states. Uh, you can see that right here. Um, you can also come over here and at this point, we want to make sure the uh, we open up Factory Talk Links um, and this is gonna be Factory Talk Links Network Browser. 
Um, you want to open that up and open up your Ethernet, uh, 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 Ethernet, Ethernet, I, I, uh, I'm sorry, Ethernet emulate Ethernet, and then just make sure you have that uh, in your file, right? You can make sure you can see that. Um, you can make sure you, only thing you need to check though, just so you, you're aware that when you go to select this is the first top layer. You don't need to read the encapsulated things that are below it. Um, you can just check that just for you know due diligence and just making sure you you have good conductivity and all that's working. Don't close that, just minimize it. I like to minimize this as well. And then I'll come over here to my actual, um, just like I would pro like downloading to a natural processor, I'm gonna come over here and download to this file uh, or d this processor that I just made in Factory Talk Logix Echo. Uh, in this case, again, I go to that same driver and then I'm gonna go down to my emulator, right? The uh, 127.0.0.1, which is the loopback. I'm gonna then download to it. At this point, it's gonna download and verify everything. And if your computer or if your file is down is completely fine, completely healthy, as we've checked, we did our, our checks before, there's no errors, right? Then it will, again, uh, be able to download and work. At this point though, you do need to be cautious and be aware of the correct versions you're using and, and the correct processor types because for me, it was very frustrating to understand that I couldn't, for at version 35, I couldn't use a compact logic. Um, so they did fix that with version 36. However, you they didn't go back and do it on 35. So it's it's it was somewhat confused, you know, uh, discouraging for me because I have to upgrade to 36 just to be able to you know simulate my program. So at this point, I have my program. I can just click it in run mode. Now at this point, if I go to Factor Talk uh, Logix Echo dashboard, you can see it is in run mode and it does correspond with what I do right here. So everything I do up, up top, just like a normal processor, right? If I go to program mode or test or whatever the case may be, it will simulate that right here as it should. Okay, so now we have the ability to come over here into our Factory Talk uh, Basically, this is an ME, uh, but we need to come over here and update our tag database. And how do we do that? We come over here and we go to factory talk links. We go to communication setup. In our communication setup, what we're going to do is we're going to click on our shortcut. It's going to point to its natural directory that it used to be, that it had is in the field. In this case, we don't have that though. So we're going to change that to our emulator and we're going to click apply. And then we're going to also copy that to runtime just because of the simple fact that this is an ME. And if I want to run the runtime, that's the ability I have, you know, and I, I can actually do that. So I'm going to copy that to runtime. So now both of these, the design and the runtime are pointed to the correct thing. They're pointed directly to this factory talk logics echo dashboard, which is the, the conduit. If you say you, you uh, if I should say that correctly. So I want to verify my connections, then I want to click OK. When I do so, I should have good conductivity. So if I come over here to one of my screens, say my main screen for instance, I should be able to play that and have all of my tags updated. Now if you do have trouble with that, you can go um, and We'll, well, I'll show you the next pass if you do have trouble with that. So let's let's uh, let's see this transpire again. It does apparently taking a second for some reason, uh, probably because I just did it all. So we'll wait till this actually pops up, which is still not having a problem. So let's let's pause the video real quick, and well, actually, it's it's starting to populate right now. So. It did actually take it a second to, to populate. You can see that the current status of my actual program is representate. Uh, it's being represented, represented in the HMI right now. So at this point, um, <clears throat> I have everything working and I can now start testing my system to make sure that, you know, I don't have any bugs or I don't have anything like that. I can actually come over here 
and you know do a runtime like say for instance I can I can go ahead and make a runtime and then run the file itself uh, keep in mind too I did upgrade this to factory talk uh, this is a factory talk view 13 or 14 and the actual system is running on 13 right now so um, I'm doing this strictly for testing I'm not doing this because I'm going to upgrade my system later I'm not going to do that any of that I'm just doing this for system testing only so everything that I have in here I'm going to start testing and um, I'm going to actually change some screens I'm going to change the way these blower screens look real quick and give it a little bit more diagnostic feel so with that said, I'll, uh, this is basically how you set that test bed up and have the ability to you know, use your process if you had something that needed to be tested or you know, for reasons of going to install it somewhere and you wanted to make sure all the bugs were out of it and you, you want to make sure all the test stuff you took out, took out is still functional, you can do it that way. Or if you, somebody reached out to you, they're having trouble and they need your support to fix a bug you can also simulate it right here without even having a processor so again it's a very helpful tool i always find it very helpful as far as doing that uh, doing the process that i just described but in the same focus you need to think about your firmware packages and what you're using so just keep that in mind too because it is a little bit discouraging that they didn't do this <clears throat> in the earlier revisions of uh, factory talk logics echo but with that said, you can always upgrade your, your processor, upgrade just like I just did and be able to test it and then still give the solution to the person. Just make, they, you just have to export the file and be, then have them import that into their, their process. So with that said, hopefully that was, that was helpful and it gave you guys some clarity on things you can do to really kind of test your systems and go through and, you know, aid you in, you know, if, well, let's just say you don't have the control logic, so you don't have the compact logic, so you don't have the processor itself, you can still do that. You can still test your stuff and you can still have the ability to do stuff. And moving forward with the industry going, um, it, the, like software's growing and software's getting better. So I, I would suggest keeping things, uh, don't be on the very latest thing, but keep in the forefront of things and keep pushing forward. and. Like even just if it's just sampling yourself, if you, if you want to do the same process to sample a code, do that so that you get the hang of it, so that you understand the process. So this is mainly you know, kind of geared for the, the people that are really trying to help somebody else troubleshoot or even fine tune their programs that they have, have written their self, right? Or their HMI programs with their actual program, with their actual PLC programs. This is kind of geared to that. So. Again, so hopefully that did help you and help you understand the reasons why I do this. So uh, with that said, we'll see you guys on the next one.